How's it going, you sexy beasts? Welcome back to the second episode of being better at first-person shooters. Last episode, we covered how to fine-tune our mouse input to get the most accurate shot possible by editing some operating system settings as well as using raw mouse input in our favorite first-person shooters. Today, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. In this episode, we'll be covering how to get the most frames per second or the highest attainable performance in-game. Typically, if your computer is struggling to run the game and your game feels choppy or laggy, then it will more than likely ruin your gaming experience or just put you off from that game entirely. Anyway, this guide is primarily focused on Planet Side 2 as it's the most hardware demanding free to play title out right now. Most of what I cover here should still carry over to other games such as Battlefield 4 or Titanfall. Any program, I and I edit, or setting will be linked in the description below for your ease of access. Anyway, let's jump right into oiling up our machines for maximum gaming. It's on the way. Stand by for Titanfall. This guide is designed with the notion that your computer at least reaches the minimum required specifications to run Planetside 2. This being an Intel Core 2 Duo or AMD Phenom 2, 4 gigabytes of RAM and an NVIDIA 8600 or ATI 4850, each with a minimum of 256 megabytes of dedicated video RAM. Everything I'll be showing off here today is done in Windows 7 64-bit with an NVIDIA graphics card. If you're not using Windows 7, such as you're running Vista or Windows 8, or have a Radeon graphics card, your experience may vary. Also keep in mind that there is absolutely no way that everything listed here will get you up to a buttery smooth 60 frames per second if you're currently getting about 20. No amount of tinkering can make up for low end components. In order to easily check your frame rate in Planet Side 2, press Alt and F while in game to display your FPS in the lower left hand corner. Alternatively, press tilde in Battlefield 4 to open the console and type perfoverlay.drawfps1 and your frame rate will be displayed for you. If you're wanting to keep track of your frame rate in any other title, I suggest downloading Fraps. The free version of the program comes with an FPS counter overlay to show what your frame rate is. After having said that, let's go ahead and knock out a few things to get us a higher frame rate without even having to step into the game. First and foremost, disabling Windows Arrow can help reduce the strain on your graphics card. It's not much, but it helps. Essentially, all the sleek and smooth buttons, windows frames, and animations in Windows is what Arrow controls. Typically, you can disable this permanently through a control panel change, but I kind of like the sleek look out of it, so let's go ahead and disable it when you're just running Planetside 2. Navigate to your Planetside 2 installation folder, which for me is under my Steam folder, Steam Apps, Common, Planetside 2. Right click the Planetside 2 application and go to Properties, and click the Compatibility tab. Then check the Disable Desktop Composition box and hit Apply. Now every time you run Planetside 2, Windows Arrow will be disabled automatically. Next up we'll be reducing the amount of pre-rendered frames our CPU processes before sending it to the graphics card. This setting typically helps out the graphics card by reducing its load, but adds more pressure to the CPU. In Planetside 2, rendering a ton of players and vehicle physics involves a lot of processing power from our CPU, which we will need every single bit of. So, go into your NVIDIA control panel and under 3D settings, choose Manage 3D settings. Under there, you can either choose Global Settings or Settings per program. For the sake of simplicity, let's stick with Global Settings. Select the Maximum Pre-Rendered Frame option and lower it from the default 3 to 1. For me, I was given a consistent boost of around 10 frames per second when I had this option lowered and was actually able to get GPU bottlenecked a couple of times in low player areas. Also keep in mind that it's a good idea to update your video drivers to make sure you've gotten the latest software to properly utilize your graphics card. At the time of this recording, if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card, it is highly recommend to stick with the driver version 332.21 as it is the most stable version for Planetside 2. Sony is currently working with NVIDIA to alleviate the problem of drivers crashing and not responding, so we'll hopefully be seeing a fix for that soon. To continue helping out the load of our processor, we'll next be unparking CPU cores. What's a parked core, you may ask? Well, Windows loves to have plenty of options built in to help people who don't use their computers to game in order to conserve energy. 
A parked core is a piece of your processor that Windows puts to sleep when it's not needed. If you're just browsing the Planetside 2 forums or checking out your super awesome favorite YouTuber, then Windows will proactively reduce the amount of computation power your processor can put out until you run a program that absolutely needs it. The problem with this is that Windows can be pretty derpy at times and thinks that some programs may only need half of your processor to run them, so it will park a few of your cores. When in actuality, you'll benefit greatly with all of your cores being unparked. So how do we alleviate this? Pretty simple. And download the program I've linked in the description below and save it to wherever you can easily access it. Run the program, click check status and once it's found all the registry entries, click unpark all and you're done. What this essentially does is automatically makes an edit to your registry which tells Windows to leave your processors alone. If you want, you can then delete the program from your computer entirely. You won't be needing it again once you've unparked them unless you're wanting to park them once more later down the road. This performance increase is most notably found with AMD processors as the parking aspect of Windows goes totally bonkers with any type of AMD processor. So if you'll more than likely see a larger increase in performance with AMD than an Intel processor. Now, this next suggestion is usually disregarded and blown off, but if you're going for absolute performance, this will help even if its impact is minor. That's right, I'm talking about the Razer Game Booster. This program helps devote all of your computer's resources to the game of your choosing by shutting down every non-essential program or process that you're currently running. Say for example you have YouTube open and you're listening to your most super awesome favorite YouTuber while you're playing a game. That's your graphics card rendering a video and your CPU uncompressing audio, all the while those two components are trying to do the same for your video game. I've made a habit of closing Firefox before I even launch a game of my own, but this program helps a ton to close unnecessary programs in mass before you start playing. This program will have minimal impact if you're consistently micromanaging your programs and processes or have plenty of RAM to spare. Alright, we've done just about all we can outside of the game. It's time to jump into action and toy around with the settings to help ensure we get the best performance possible from our machines. Go ahead and log into your character and press escape, then select settings at the bottom right. Hit the graphics tab and let's start to play around a bit. First and foremost, hit your shadows option. This is probably the most demanding aspect of these settings since for whatever reason, it strains your CPU instead of your graphics card. I have mine set to low, but if you truly want maximum performance, turning the setting to off will greatly increase your game's frame rate, while also making it look kinda crappy. Next up, set effects quality and particles to low. The number one absolute frame rate killer for me is when an ESF strafes me with rocket pods. It just tanks my FPS counter, so this will help alleviate that. Turning off motion blur, ambient occlusion, fog shadows, and flora quality will help reduce the added taxation of your processor. If you are never GPU bottlenecked, then you can keep, this, keep the model, texture, and lighting quality set on whichever you wish. Your resolution should typically be set at the maximum your monitor allows, but if you're wanting some extra frames, we can do one of two things. Set your render quality to a lower amount, or lower your resolution to one of a similar aspect ratio. If you're running a 100% render quality and still want a good looking game with a bit higher frame rate, then putting the render quality to 93% will downscale the resolution of drawn textures ever so slightly while also netting you a slightly higher FPS. 93% for me seems to be the sweet median between performance and visual quality. You can also lower your game's render resolution. Say for me, I run a 1920x1080 display, which is a little more than 2 million pixels being rendered by your graphics card. By lowering your resolution, you lower the strain put on your GPU. Typically, you'll want to stay within your aspect ratio to keep the game feeling the same. Say for example, I want to lower my resolution, but still keep the same field of view and such. I'll drop the 1920x1080 to 1600x900. Both of these are 16x9 aspect ratios, but rendering at 1600x900 is about 600,000 less pixels needing to be rendered. If you're constantly GPU bound by the FPS counter and you're running your game on high, go ahead and switch it over to Ultra. You'll more than likely get a frame rate boost since you're taking more load off of the CPU while also making the game look much better. 
Please keep in mind that these are all recommendations and each experience will vary greatly. Just instant action somewhere, hide and toy around with the settings to get the best performance. Setting up your game to get 200 frames per second in the warp gate is doing you no good when you're only getting about 20 frames per second in large scale fights. I've linked my INI file in the description below if you want to run your settings with the settings that I use in game. Also, I've linked an absolute minimum settings INI file if you want to run the game completely bare, as well as a maximum settings INI if you want to super sample the textures in the game and make it look absolutely gorgeous while more than likely killing your frame rate. The last thing you can do to potentially increase your frame rate is to overclock your processor. Now this is the one of the most challenging, time consuming and advanced techniques a user can take advantage of. As overclocking is very difficult and requires a lot of knowledge on the concept, I'll leave you with some googling of your own as each motherboard's overclocking process is different. If you bought a pre-built computer then you can find out what kind of motherboard and processor your computer has by going to start, all programs, accessories, and running system information. There it will list your processor type and your motherboard will typically be listed under system manufacturer and model. Since I've built my computer myself, these are both blank. From here, it's all about using your favorite search engine, Googler, to find an already existing guide made by a very generous person to properly overclock your processor through your motherboard's BIOS. I currently have an i7-2600K with a stock clock speed of 3.4 GHz and have her overclocked to 4.5 GHz on stock cooling. There you have it, you sexy beast. How to get the most performance out of your machine without having to just outright buy a new computer. Hopefully the information discussed within this video helped you some. If it did, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear some success stories if anything shown helped you out in your games. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, please give it a big ass thumbs up to show your appreciation. It helps a lot guys and I love you for it. If you'd like to see more videos like these, then go ahead and subscribe. It is 100% of a jillion percent for now and for always free. Prove that man could do it.